Hey, welcome back to the TPR 86cc build series. So I ended the last video in the garage. It was cold and wet. I just got done um, installing the MVT and trying to check timing and things like that. I wanted to go take it out and do some test runs, but the weather was really nasty. Um, and after that, the weather got even colder, um, windy, all that kind of stuff. And maybe you can tell in my voice, but I also got sick. But now the weather's coming back around. Um, we got a couple of actually pretty warm days today and I think maybe tomorrow is supposed to be about 50 instead of highs around freezing so I want to take the scooter out and try to do some test runs before the MVT ignition was installed I took some video of things like revving taking off um, doing little wheelies stuff like that I've also got timed runs from acceleration and I want to go out now and try to duplicate those things so we can compare before and after um, without really any other changes I'm not changing around jetting or anything at this point the only thing I've adjusted is the idle mixture um, and the idle speed because it did change a bit when I installed the MVT with the amount of advance it has but other than that it's set up exactly as it was before let's start by just seeing and hearing it rev on the stand and I will tell you before I even show you these clips that in the last video when I first installed the MVT ignition and got it started up I told you it sounded like a different engine like completely different and it did um, but I think that was just my excitement overtaking my uh, rationality in that I've broken enough belts to know it sounds like a totally different engine anyway if you don't have the CVT installed. Um, so that was a lot of it. It's not going to sound that crazy now. But anyway, let's take a look at that. <laughs> Not as much difference as I thought I'd get there, but I do think it's an improvement. And there is a possibility that because it is colder, um, it's roughly, I believe, about 15 degrees colder now than when I shot the other clips, which is another reason I wanted to wait for the warmer weather. Um, initially, they had forecasted it would be near 60 today, but that just didn't happen. I was trying to be closer um, with ambient temperature in all conditions just to give it a better, uh, more fair comparison, but sometimes that just can't happen, especially around here in the late fall and winter. Um, so anyway, some of that could be just because of the needle settings, maybe the jetting or something could throw off how well it responds. Um, but moving on, let's look at how it does taking off. I don't think you can really tell much difference just watching it take off in the third person that way. Um, maybe some of you can pick out a little bit of difference in the exhaust tone or something like that. What I can tell you um, from my own experience on it is that it always feels like it's trying to pull the front up when it takes off, but it's usually kind of gradual. It's going to pick up pretty quickly if I don't sit on the very front of the seat anyway, but now it's more of a kind of snatch off the line than a little more gradual feeling than it was before. So it's just a little bit more aggressive um, jump off the line is what I can feel. And that's mainly what I noticed from it. I think it might pick up a little quicker, but we'll find that out later. So the next thing I wanted to look at, um, another one that's not exactly a technical thing, but you've seen throughout the uh, progress here that I gauge some of my progress by how well it will pick the front wheel up. Um, so I went out before I changed the ignition, um, did a few little wheelies the way I always do, just to see how that looked and felt, and then I went out and did some small wheelies um, now that the ignition is installed to see what the difference is. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
that's another one that I think you won't really be able to see so well on video as you can feel if you are riding it in person here. Um, so the way I do wheelies, because I have no talent for doing wheelies, is just to get below the clutch engagement RPM. So I'm rolling somewhere between usually 5 and about, I think it's 12 miles per hour. Um, so my clutch is not engaged. I give it a little gas, and then it will jump the front end up. Um, I'm normally sitting toward the back of the seat. That way it guarantees it's going to come up in the air. It will do it um, on its own otherwise sometimes, but I am certain that it will come up as much as I want it to usually when I'm sitting on the back of the seat. So that's how I do them. And normally, even with the uh, stock ignition the way I had it set up, um, it'll jump it up higher than I really want it to uh, because you'll see that I get the wheel starts coming up and then I'm out of the gas because if I don't let off, it'll go up higher than I want to the point that I'm going to come off of the scooter um, or at least till I'm not comfortable with it being up there so far. Um, so it will do way more wheelie than I will do anyhow. But with the MVT ignition installed, what I noticed is I don't actually have to sit all the way on the back of the seat if I don't want to. Um, and when I do sit on the back of the seat, it's really aggressive. Um, it can come up even quicker than before. I really feel an even sharper jolt or snatch uh, of the front end. So it's definitely got that immediacy uh, that you'd be looking for with an ignition like this. Now I want to move on to acceleration times. And this way I'll actually have some numbers to show you rather than just telling you, well, it felt better to me, um, or maybe you can pick up a difference audibly or whatever. Um, so again, same as everything else, I did zero to 50 usually acceleration runs, and then I can kind of chop it up and time them 30, 40, 50 mile an hour, whatever I want um, later. But I can show you all the numbers for those, and I'm actually curious to find out if that little bit of uh, more aggressive takeoff actually does translate to a quicker time. I think it should, but I don't know if it's going to do a whole lot. looking at the numbers that was the most telling video so far because if you watch them both and listen to them both coming off the line you can clearly hear the difference between the uh, modified stock ignition and the MVT ignition because the modified stock ignition has a bit of a lag or a buildup when I get on the throttle and once the MVT was installed it was pretty much immediate when I got on the throttle that it started moving and getting right into the power band um, and that applies carries over right into the numbers because with the uh, lightened flywheel lightened stock flywheel and i had my timing set to 28 degrees initial advance with a stock cpi cdi my best times from anything i had recorded were 4.3 seconds 0 to 30 um, 6.7 seconds 0 to 40 and 11.0 seconds 0 to 50. Then with the MVT, and again, this is um, no real changes. I basically just adjusted some of the idle settings really quickly. Um, I did 3.8 seconds, 0 to 30. So that's uh, 0.5 seconds, a half a second quicker from 0 to 30 miles per hour. 6.1 seconds, 0 to 40. So 0.6 seconds quicker there and 10.3 seconds 0 to 50 so 0.7 seconds quicker there and in both cases those are average times so i would go one way and then back the other and average them that way the uh the road if there were any kind of incline or decline it wouldn't have any effect or should have very minimal effect as well as it would negate the effects of wind or anything like that so just trying to be as fair as i can now the quickest that i got out of the mvt um, when it wasn't average, was actually 10.0 seconds, 0 to 50, um, which is a full second quicker than the uh, modified stock setup was to 50. So it's clearly showing gains in the acceleration, um, feels a lot better, and I'm pretty happy with that. Actually, I'm really happy because 
<clears throat> my big T-Max here, um, it has a 500cc engine, four stroke, unfortunately. Um, and I've got lighter sliders in there to get it going a little quicker off the line. And that does 4.2 seconds, zero to 30 miles per hour. So now this thing is 0 0.4, 4 tenths of a second quicker than it is, zero to 30. And uh, I have a feeling that the T-Max handles my weight a little better. So I think if you had a lighter rider on both, I think the small scooter would probably actually outrun it even worse. But anyway, I was just happy that uh, the small scooter is now officially quicker than the T-Max, even if it is only to 30. By 40 miles per hour, the T-Max um, takes about, let's see, 0.7 seconds less to get to 40. But again, we're talking about 40 to 45 horsepower with a T-Max versus maybe 15 right now, something like that with my little two-stroke. So I'm really happy with that. Now I've got my tank topped off with fuel and I want to go ahead and take a little bit of a test ride. Um, it's not going to be a hundred plus mile ride like I did in one of my past videos, but hopefully I'll ride at least 50 miles today because I want to get a basic idea of a couple of things. The first is the fuel economy. That's why I went ahead and topped it off so I can check it um, after I'm done riding, see how much fuel I use. And the second is to get an idea of what my charging system is doing. So you can see I've had this on a charger um, since the last time I rode it and it's sitting at 12.7 volts right now. And what I want to do is just to ride it, um, leave my headlights on like I normally would, not do anything special and see where the battery is after I shut it off when I come home to give me a good idea of how well, um, how much it's capable of keeping the battery charged. Um, and I did notice when I was doing my other test rides um, for the test that you've seen prior to this one that when I'm sitting at idle it's not charging it's actually below charging I've seen as low as 10 point something volts when it was sitting at idle for a while but when I'm going down the road it does tend to get over 14 volts um, as long as I'm at a decent cruising speed so I'm just curious to see how that kind of works out with like I said like a 50 plus mile ride to see where my battery ends up <laughs> Definitely down from the 12.7 volts before I left the house. And this was an hour and 55 minute long ride, so just shy of two hours, with pretty equal parts of in town and out of town or open road kind of riding. Um, and what I noticed was voltage gradually declined um, throughout the trip. So when I first left the house, I was seeing uh, something like 16 volts, um, 15 to 16 volts anyway, going down the road at 8 to 10,000 RPM cruising. And even when I first got into town, uh, around town it would hold 12, 13 volts. But then toward the end of the ride, I was noticing that in town I was seeing um, sometimes even into the 10 volt range. And on open roads, I was just barely seeing um, maybe 12 and a half volts or so. So what I started doing was when I was in town, I would turn my headlight off if I was just sitting at a red light or something like that, just to try and conserve it a little more. Um, and a couple times on back roads on the way home, I just turned my headlight off for a second um, or a little bit to uh, try and get the charging up. So definitely it cannot keep up with this charging system or with my headlight lighting system. Um, and again, that's a 42 watt headlight, LED headlight, um, an LED basically truck and trailer uh, light as, a, as my tail and brake light. So not a whole lot of draw there, um, but it does well enough for a couple hours of riding. Uh, I'm not so sure how it's going to do when I try to go to the beach and ride around in town for something like eight hours straight. I don't think it's going to treat me too well there. Um, I'm probably going to find the limits of it at that rate. The total trip was 52.4 miles, but I filled up the tank at 49.9 miles and it used 1.153 gallons of gas. So that came out to 43.28 miles per gallon, which is basically right on par with where it was before the ignition system. Um, when I had rode around at the beach, it was averaging about 40 miles per gallon, which is just straight in town riding. And when I took it out on open roads in the past in one of the videos, 
it averaged 47 miles per gallon so it's right in between those two and like I said it was about a 50-50 mix of in town and out of town riding so it doesn't seem like the ignition has changed much as far as my fuel economy. What really surprised me with the MVT ignition was part throttle because I was running about 28 degrees of advance with my modified stock ignition system and that only backed off a few degrees uh, total and this MVT starts at around 40 to 42 uh, degrees of advance so I thought what was going to happen was I probably couldn't use part throttle at all. I thought it was just going to crackle from spark knock and I'd probably have to just be on and off the throttle like a light switch. And I can actually roll into the throttle slow and out of the throttle slow and I don't have any problem with it. I had no issues with uh, using the throttle whatsoever. It actually acted pretty much like it did before, just more responsive. So I was very, very pleased with that. I didn't see anything crazy on my uh, CHTs. Everything seems to be in order and I really thought it wouldn't work out that well. So no changes. Like I said, all I changed was idle mixture and idle speed a little bit and it's running great. Um, I'm not saying it, there's not more in it possibly, but just right out of the box, the thing's doing very well. And I'm not so sure that would work too well if mine wasn't already um, pretty rich everywhere. So I'm not saying just throw this ignition system on and don't check your uh, jetting and whatnot. Um, definitely use caution, but in my case, it's actually worked really well right out of the box. One thing that I haven't checked is top speed, and I don't really think there's a whole lot of need to, because on that ride, I topped out at 62 miles per hour on flat ground sitting up, and I wasn't really trying to top it out all the way, but that seemed to be about where it stopped. Um, and I was over 60 miles per hour multiple times um, going down the road, and that's pretty much how it acted before. I could take it out and try to tuck down, replace the belt like I did before and take all the shims out um, of the variator just to make it fair, but I don't think it's doing enough on the top end right now that I could say for sure if it was the ignition system or maybe the breeze was a little bit different or something like that. Overall I've been pretty pleased with this MVT ignition system, the Digital Direct DD06 in my case. My only real complaints first one the big one for me is the lack of charging power while it does have charging power if you want to go on long rides it's going to be a problem to run your headlight um, turn signals taillight etc the whole time um, don't know exactly what the solution will be to that but clearly I can't ride this thing for you know eight hours at night or something like that without having a real issue um, other thing kind of a negative point as I've shown you in all the setup videos, it is a lot more setup involved than something like a standard ignition where you've got a keyed flywheel and you just pop it onto the crank over the wood roof key. So it's definitely a lot more time involved there. Um, not a big deal if you like tinkering with your scooter though, you may actually enjoy setting it up, who knows. Um, but other than those things, it seems to be mostly positive. I've definitely got a better throttle response. It wheelies easier, it takes off harder, um, my acceleration times have improved, feels crisp, um, it does actually sound a little better to me, so, you know, not a bad system for the kind of investment that you're looking at. At least that's my opinion of it. So if you found this video helpful or enjoyed it, please give it a like, share it, and subscribe for more, and don't forget to click that bell um, so you'll get notifications when I upload new videos. Thanks for watching.